Well, this is Horizon's annual gala, and it's one of the things that we look forward to every year. And the reason we look forward to it is because it's the most people that we get under one roof together to talk about and celebrate our community, to celebrate the foundation, to hear about some of the stories of people who've done so much for our community, and we always make sure to have a lot of fun because a gala is meant to be a gala. It's meant to be, yes, it's something about our community. Hopefully we, we can inspire people to support the community over throughout the year, but we also really want people to enjoy their being with each other because that is what has held this community together for the last 50, 100 years and will continue to going forward. Please welcome the co-chair of Horizons Foundation's Board of Directors, Olga Talamante. So good to be here with you tonight, sisters and brothers. There are some things that happened tonight that some of us have been commenting on this evening, mostly cussing. And um, we can get the cussing out of the out of the way and say this really sucked. Okay. So, but here we are. And after today, I think there's a better place that we could be at than be here with each other together. <laughs> to unpack about the impact of this confirmation and I know it will be part of the discussion and the reflection and the strategizing for how we're going to move forward. Well, one thing I know for sure, it is up to me, it is up to you, it is up to us to be engaged, to take action, to stand up, to be in solidarity with each other and understand that the harm that can come from this Supreme Court will affect the most vulnerable, the most vulnerable in our community, our LGBT community, our immigrant community, our trans community. It's going to mess with our women's rights, the people of color, the most vulnerable. So I'm here with my sweetheart, Ola. We will stand up together and fight with all of you together. when I was at one of the um, rallies in front of the detention center, the ICE detention center in, the Richmond, in Richmond, protesting the separation of the children from their families. A sister from the Ohlone community <coughs> said that our hearts were breaking at the sight of those unprotected children. And our hearts continue to break with so many injustices around us. But then she also said, a broken heart is an open heart. And an open heart can allow love to come in and help us to heal. So I say tonight we have an open heart, all of us together. We're going to let the love come in. We're going to let the love come in. And give us the strength for the struggles to come. And if there's one thing in here tonight, there is a lot of love. So let us get started with this very wonderful program that we have for you for this evening. I bring you greetings from my co-chair, Adam Bloom, who could not be with us tonight. I know many of his friends are here tonight, and we thank you for being part of the Horizons family. You all being here also reminds us of the good that has happened, that we have extraordinary people in our midst like our grantees, our many donors, colleagues, sister organizations, and other supporters. It has been great to see you already at the reception, and I think we have some time to spend at the Tonga Room. And I think there, I think a lot of cussing is gonna be allowed. <laughs> it's something that we need more of in these times. We need people. Stepping up. Now, don't start cussing at me. So, let's go. So, we need to people to step up, like tonight's honorees. 
Horizons is pleased to honor the trans and student rights activist Gavin Grimm, who is here with us tonight. And also, my hero, Jewel Gomez, who's been a trailblazer in our movement and a friend to so many of us in this room. So much with so much happening throughout, uh, it's easy to forget that it wasn't that long ago that corporations wouldn't be caught dead supporting an LGBTQ organization. But tonight shows how far we've come in that realm and so grateful for the numerous corporate sponsors that are with us tonight on the right side of history with us tonight. We're especially grateful to our visionary and advocate level sponsors Dolby, PG&E, and Union Bank. Thank you all very much. And please look in your programs for the many other sponsors and please thank them. This, this whole week I've been, of course, looking forward to this, to this dinner and also to last night, and I'll just take a moment of personal privilege. Last night, the, the organization that I was just running a few months ago, Chicana Latina Foundation, was going to have, thank you, was going to have its dinner at the Western St. Francis, and the workers uh, went on strike. You know, you know what it would mean for us to cancel a dinner like this. Well, that's what we had to do last night. It was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do stand in solidarity with the workers that are fighting for a livable wage, some of whose parents of the, of the scholarship awardees that we work with were on the picket line. So we were not going to cross that picket line. So, so again, so great to be here with all of you tonight. Um, and now it is my pleasure to introduce to you a real champion of freedom. Many of you know him. Executive Director of the ACLU of Northern California since 2009. Abdi's fight for civil liberties has been expansive and inclusive of racial, gender, and economic justice. In 2014, the ACLU agreed to represent our honoree Gavin Grimm in his fight over student rights. Please welcome Abdi Soltani. Well, let me just say a, a big thank you to the Horizons Foundation for your leadership and for bringing this community together. Thank you, Horizons Foundation. <laughs> July 9th of this year was the 150th anniversary of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. The 14th Amendment provides for equal citizenship, but it goes further and provides for equal protection of the law to all persons, citizen and non-citizen alike. In the history of equality and the march for freedom in this country, it is not the justices and their confirmations to the Supreme Court that made that history. It is courageous people who stand up for dignity and equality and with their power and their force, move this country forward to realize its promise. Tonight, we recognize one such person, Gavin Grimm. Gavin brought a powerful case for transgender rights of students under the 14th Amendment, as well as our nation's civil rights laws. Gavin deserves this award for courage, the courage to be himself, the courage to speak at a school board hearing when his own rights were being stripped away from him, his courage to bring a case against his school district, to take it to the Supreme Court, and to see it through in the lower courts today. But most of all, we're here to honor Gavin's courage for speaking to other young people and to all of us to move hearts and minds and to create a community that welcomes equally every person. 
please join me in welcoming Gavin Grimm to receive the Prince Award of the Horizon Foundation. Because 
now we have a seat at the table. When the gay community has, in an endowment, that kind of money, and 100 million they'll blow through. I'm not even worried about Roger, Deb, you're gonna blow through that. We're gonna be up here telling it's 200 million by the time in two years. Literally, people have opened their hearts, and when they've seen what others do, it just, it's a, it's a domino effect, and it's been amazing. So I want to thank you all for what you've done, and now I'm going to turn it over to my, the only man I would have ever married. Be still my heart. Bryson's is honored to be home for more than 350 people who have made planned gifts. These legacies are powerful, poignant, and strategic. People like you and me who have thought carefully about when that time comes, where we would like our final gift to go. These legacies reflect the lives we've created and lived, the causes and issues that we've devoted our lives to. Legacies, these legacies total far more than the 80 million Susan just announced. The 80 million is money specifically dedicated to supporting the LGBTQ community. But many of us also want to provide for other causes and organizations in our estate plans. Alma maters, communities of faith, institutions that have shaped our lives and formed us into the individuals that we are. Horizons works directly with donors to craft these plans to make sure that they accomplish exactly what the donor wants. And these legacy gifts represent our future individually as donors and together as a community. These gifts are our future intentions. They are not funds at Horizons today but rather represent our commitment to the future. I served on the board of Horizons for most of the 1990s when we were doing important work, but on a smaller scale. Every day I am impressed with the wisdom and professionalism of Horizons, its board and its staff, and most importantly, you, the Foundation's generous donors, your eyes are on the future that we are building together. I came out of the closet 40 years ago this week. It's not the first time. October 2nd, 1978, at a rally, Harvey Milk led at the Civic Center against the nefarious Proposition 6. At that time, there were, with the exception of Mr. Milk, no LGBT elected officials in the United States. There were no laws protecting our rights, which in themselves were non-existent. Sodomy laws in California and most other states made making love a criminal offense subject to imprisonment. Most LGBT women and men lived in corridors of shame with all the psychological trauma those corridors imposed. Nor could any human being foresee the shattering epidemic just four years away. As LGBT women and men, we had nothing except the one thing that mattered. We had love. And we had love in abundance in all its manifestations. And love, yoked with justice, its true sibling, sibling is an indomitable force. This we've come to know. That yoke power created over time many institutions to serve our burgeoning, wounded, and not even yet fully realized community. Horizons Foundation came out of that work and today is the indispensable center in the Bay Area, in California, and beyond. 
It sheds its light around the globe, even to the heart of Africa. We are now in another epidemic, an epidemic of chaos and prevarication and kleptomania and bullying and bigotry and violence and fear. But this latest epidemic, while daunting and vile, is not more powerful than our twin yoke powers of love built on the foundation of justice. When the four of us began this now and forever campaign, when asked for a gift, some folks would say to me, Bill, we have gay marriage now. We have everything. Whoa. We need to deepen the resources of Horizons instead, this beloved and superbly led institution, to meet the challenges that present themselves every day, as is quite evident on this very Saturday. We have the power and we have the purse. If you are here tonight, you have the capacity to make Horizons an impregnable source of support, succor, assistance, presence, and hope. We must not lend our hearts to the clutches of despair, for that is only the unforgivable sin. We must do our part individually and collectively to bend the arc that Dr. King instructed us to do, an act of bending for which he and Harvey Milk gave their lives, and we are called to no less. On Monday morning, please call Deb Stallings with news of your grand gift, and you will feel your arc bending musculature flexion. We had a president, and he reminded us, Si se puede. With gratitude, we thank you. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a beacon of our community, no stranger to himself to stages, the beloved and venerable artistic director of the New Conservatory Theater, Mr. Ed Decker. Disbelief. And there's a lot of that going around. 
something you have come to perfection in your work. I slid open the closet door. I looked inside. A vivid memory sparked. I remember the first time we met in the basement at 25 Van Ness, which at the time housed both the new Conservatory Theater Center and the San Francisco Arts Commission, where you used to work. You caught my eye because I had yet to see anyone show up for work in the dungeon so exquisitely dressed. My gay man radar sounded immediately, and it gave me the courage to make a beeline to introduce myself. Of course, I knew who you were from your literary achievements, activism, and vanguard philanthropic leadership. So I was a little nervous. Still, I said, hi, I'm Ed Decker, artistic director of NCTC. Welcome to the netherworld. You look absolutely fabulous. Then I extended my hand in a greeting. You pushed it gently to the, to the side. And you said, I know who you are. Then you grasped me in a firm embrace and whispered, I'm an artist too. It's our job to be fabulous. <laughs> Tonight, or this morning when I opened my closet, I thought it would be best to wear my very nice suit. We bonded quickly, mostly in sharing our dreams for the future of the queer community, equanimity, gender parity, diversity, inclusion, visibility, the list was so very long. During the period of our ever-growing friendship, I came to know just how magnificently visionary and tenacious you are. You operate with grace and deafness in so many worlds. I have learned so very much from you. How to make waves politically without alienating your opponents. How to motivate philanthropy towards collective advancement. And how to tell a story that lifts us all up. I so admire you and your wife Diane's courage in the struggle for our right to marry, front and center, showing the world that love is love is love. Your, your leadership is an example for so many of us, and you both make it quite clear that there is no space for shame, only room for respect, dignity, then our friendship blossomed from colleague to collaborator, collaborators. And for nearly a decade, we have worked together at NCTC on Words and Music, your theatrical trilogy. This partnership has yielded two world premieres, Waiting for Giovanni and Leaving the Blues, and the third piece, Unpacking in P-Town, Incubating, and I might add, available for additional producers to jump on board as we speak. <laughs> Sorry, Roger, I just couldn't resist. Will it be our final creative collaboration together? Absolutely not. There is so much more work to do in our shared missions of promoting harmony, heritage, and the very best of humanity. Telling our stories are as important as ever. We are living in a world where sabers rattle incessantly. Fingers are pointed, and the other is often vilified. Refugees are fleeing unthinkable circumstances and seeking a better life for themselves and their families, while the countries in which they seek asylum and sanctuary are caught up in blinding, xenophobic rage. It's our duty to make new stories that tackle these subjects and many others with alacrity, imagination, your work, Jewel Gomez, is a guiding light and a beacon of hope. I am so very honored and blessed to know you. With this letter, I thank you for all that you have given so unconditionally to me and to each and every one in this room. Your leadership, activism, kindness, wisdom, and creativity have blazed 
many trails enriching our lives. On behalf of the Horizons Foundation and a very grateful public, it is my privilege to present you with the Visionary Award. Much love. Right now, and is most important, 
is to act. I'm wearing this button just in case there's a big count. And Hillary really won. Thank you very, very much for sharing this night with me. Please turn your attention to the screens for the premiere of our newest video. political climate uh, that many of us are calling the resistance uh, because we must resist daily. Horizons is playing such a key role. What led me into LGBTQ connection was just kind of me really wanting to support um, in my life journey. Not only did I identify as LGBTQ, but also I identified as undocumented. So kind of living in those um, two closets, really made it difficult for me to really uh, reach my potential. The senior community that took along is a pretty large group. Unfortunately, most of them are in the closets, so to speak, because as they got older, they became vulnerable, and they became afraid that if people knew they were gay, that they would be hurt. The Trump administration is basically doing whatever they can to roll back the few rights and protections that we have, and ultimately to do whatever they can to deny our very humanity and to deny our very existence as people. Transgender people who are in detention here in the U.S. just face horrific violence. Transgender immigrants make up one in 500 detainees and make up one in five reported cases of sexual assault. Without Horizons, our community would not have found the resources. But that's not just names of organizations, those are people's lives, so lives would have been lost. In high school, I had, a, I had, you know, told everyone that I was undocumented. Coming out as undocumented was a first step into coming out as a gay person. And me really trying to find um, my identity. We're doing some podcasts at Curry. Um, we call it Revolting Seniors. <laughs> the podcast is a little bit from Curry to the community and say, come on in, listen to us. We got some stuff in common. Another great example is that we have partnered with the Gender Law Center to make sure that there is bond money to get our folks out of prison. I actually cannot think of another foundation or donor that has done this put money and resources to do what we can to keep transgender immigrants safe, to keep LGBT immigrants safe. And that's the type of action and that's the type of leadership and risk that we need in this moment. I am still undocumented. I have a DACA, which as we know right now is really in limbo. I don't know if tomorrow, you know, I might get deported. In those moments of me really putting my liberty on the line, I felt so powerful because I came to the realization that I was becoming part of something bigger, part of something that was gonna change the, the way this world works. Horizons is the thing that pops us up. That's a bridge that causes us to come together. Like I said, it's like family. I suspect that, like me, many of you despair some days. And really wonder how are we going to move forward. The only way that I can deal with that despair and that anguish is to be in community, to be with each other, and to strengthen each other. And I hope that that is what Horizons provides for all of you. Horizons is really making that happen. Horizons is willing to take that risk on us, and I just think it's a very beautiful thing. Please welcome Horizons President Roger Dowdy. <laughs> Quite that lucky. And what a wonderful night it has 
already been. Just the stories in, in that video. Actually, the people who helped to make that video possible, the stars of the video, they're all here, I believe, tonight. Would you stand for a moment, please? I'm Eduardo, MJ, Chris, and of course, our very own Olga. Thank you. Thank you all for making that possible and sharing your stories. And speaking of making things possible, Speaking of making things possible, would all the members of Horizon Board of Directors please stand for a moment? Each of you. Every one of you makes tremendous contributions to the foundation and to our community. And you do it as volunteers. Please know that your contributions, all of your gifts, that they are so much seen and they are so deeply appreciated by me and by the community around you. And now my staff colleagues, and yeah, even the shyer ones among us, please stand up for a moment. I can't see you all, but I'll find out. Please stand up. You come to work. You come to work every day. And you do tremendous things. And you do them with such love of our community. You do them, you do them with class. And so Junie, Jovial, Terry, Tara, Nicole, Scott, Anthony, Deb, Francisco, and John, thank you for what you do every day. And Gavin and Jewel, and Gavin and Jewel, where even to begin? Thank you for helping us to see new visions. Thank you for helping to break down doors that were there before us. And at a time when words like hero and shiro and heroine tend to get thrown around a lot, thank you both for being the real things. You know, I don't know about you, but the world feels an awful lot like it's on fire right now. And it's not just because of those terrible wildfires we've been seeing over the last couple of years, but well, how could it be otherwise when we are seeing, about to be seated at the U.S. Supreme Court, the second man credibly accused of sexual assault or sexual harassment? This is like a national day of disgrace. And this nation's political and cultural fires seem to get stoked more and more every day, and we see fires that are sparked by resentment and racism and misogyny and xenophobia and greed, and so many of them are sparked by our very own arsonist in chief. Yes, yes, it can feel a lot like the country itself is burning. And in our own community, people are also afraid. Yes, even right here in our blessed Bay Area bubble. Horizons did a little research not too long ago, and what that research showed is that more than twice as many people in the community, this is pre-Kavanaugh, more than twice as many of us in our community feared that what we're going through marks a major historical reversal rather than just a bump in the historical road. You know, I really wish it were otherwise. I really, really do, but we have got reason to be worried. And God knows we've got reason to be outraged. And yet at the same time, at the same time, through all of that smoke, through all of that smoke, I see something else. I see a thousand people battling the flames. I see people of great heart who are refusing to let those flames just roll over us. I see people long kept at the margins of our society and of our community, trans people, people of color, poor people, women, stepping forward, and I see them claiming leadership. I see women of surpassing courage. I see them saying, me too, and at grave personal risk, at last holding at least some men to account. And I see young people, queer and otherwise, from Parkland, Florida, all the way to Oakland, California, who are standing up and saying no to violence. And I see the brilliance of the plans and the strategies and the ideas of all the community nonprofit organizations serving our community. And I see the impact. I see the impact of what it is that Horizons has the great privilege of funding. Like a recent grant, the one that Chris and Olga talked about in the video, trying to make sure that some of the most vulnerable people in our community can be gotten out of immigration detention. Or like our grant to the RISE Center, to make sure that there are life-changing, often 
life-saving programs available for queer youth in Richmond, or a grant for Latinx families to Somos Familia, or to the Black Immigrant Justice Coalition, or to the Black Immigrant Justice Coalition to serve a part of our community that is often overlooked, to the Rainbow Community Center to serve thousands of people out in Contra Costa County, to the Queer Cultural Center to promote the arts in our community, and so many more in the North Bay, South Bay, the East Bay, San Francisco, the Peninsula, and beyond. And Horizons is able to make these grants, and scores of others. We can work in so many ways to try to keep the flames away from our community for one reason and one reason only. And that's because of the generosity of people like you. And it is truly an honor to stand here before you and to be able to say on behalf of Horizons, thank you. Thank you. so many in this room have graced me and Lourdes. I share this with you tonight not to eulogize my mother again, nor in search of sympathy. I share it because this moment has made me think. It has made me think hard about what it is that really counts. What really counts in this life? What really counts in this world? What in the end? When all of our suns have risen and all of our moons have set, after all of our hopes and dreams and disappointments and joys and tragedies, after all of that lies behind us, what really counts? Now, there are, of course, a hundred things that any of us could say would count and that mean and they count to us. It could be our faith. It could be a piece of art. It could be art itself. It could be that glass of Catherine Cabernet. <laughs> It could be even your memories of last weekend's Folsom Street Fair. <laughs> or a great community, you know? <laughs> but as I've reflected, as I've reflected in these recent, very trying weeks, a handful of things have risen to the top. Family counts, whether it's by blood or by choice, or both. Friends count. Friends count. Of course, for many of us, our friends are our families. In fact, to see one of the true glories of our community, one of the ways in which we have truly changed this world, look no further than our families and our friends. Friends count. Community counts. A community is what you get when people join together for really any other reason beyond self-interest alone. In fact, community community that's worthy of the name, at least, is always greater than the sum of its parts. Because community encompasses that it exceeds any one of us. And everybody here, all of you, we are part of a community that's been born out of courage and hope, out of resistance and struggle, and out of dancing and joy. A community that we have raised up over centuries of hurt and lies and jails and closets. A community of which, for all of its many flaws, a community of which we can all be immensely proud. Community counts. The fight counts. So long as humanity remains unperfected, and God knows when the vantage point of the day, that looks like it's a long time coming. There is always a fight. And as LGBT people, we are still fighting for the freedom and the equality of every LGBTQ person, be they in the Bay Area, across the country, or across the globe. Now for some of us, for some of us, that time of equality has largely arrived. 
Those flames seem pretty far away from our own houses. But that's not true for all of us. And the fight worth fighting. The only fight that is worth fighting is the one in which nobody, nobody, nobody gets left behind. That, that is the fight. And even that, and even that, even that is not, is not the whole fight. Because the fight is also against racism. It is the fight against sexism, against xenophobia, against gross inequality. The fight is simultaneously many different fights, and it is the one great fight. It is the ancient and forever fight for justice and for simple, sacred human dignity. points to the final item on my short list of some of the things that count, and that is legacy. Legacy counts. What marks do we leave behind with our family and our friends? And what are our legacy for our community? Did we help to make it strong? Did we help to move it even a little bit closer to what Horizon's vision describes as a world in which every LGBTQ person can live a life of pride, dignity, justice? The legacy of every one of us that each of us has and the one grand collective legacy that we can leave to future generations, well, that's been at the heart of the Now and Forever campaign since the very beginning. The campaign has been about taking our strength, taking our connectedness, taking all that we have learned and, and won and built and paying it forward. The campaign has been about making real a revolutionary vision of the very first LGBT community anywhere in the world that is providing for our future generations. And as Bill, Susan, Joyce, and Scott just shared a few minutes ago, Horizons has made spectacular progress toward our goal of identifying an unheard of $100 million in future gifts. And that progress could only be happening. It could only be happening because there are people of great heart who are stepping up and they are saying, count me in. Count me in. And I cannot find words describe just how profound, how thrilling that progress is, or what it says about our community. You see, I believe that there is something, there's something that is deeply human, and, and it's a very good thing, but there's something deeply human about being giving with those that we're closest to, and very often people who are quite a lot like ourselves. There's something not just profoundly human, that is human but that is noble, that is noble about giving to those whom we do not know be those in the next neighborhood, the next town, the next country, or the next generation, and generation after that, and one after that, and all of the generations that follow. Were we there? When for each of us, for you, for me, when it all comes full circle, and when all that is to be said has been said, and all that is to be finished has been finished, if someone were to ask you, were you there? Were you there for your family, for your friends, and for your, your community? Were you there when the fires were burning? Were you there for the fight? Were you there side by side, arm in arm with your brothers and sisters? And when your story is told, will the storyteller be able to say, oh, yes, yes, she was there. Yes, yes, they were there. Yes, yes. For all of you here tonight, such great friends of the foundation, such champions for our community, never doubt that if anyone ever asks you now or any day that question, that you can say yes, yes, I was there. Your support for Horizons, your support for our community, your greatness of heart, for you knowing what really counts, please know that no one will ever be able to question that yes, you will. And for every time that you picked up a bucket against the flames, I thank you. For every time that you put your hand up, that you volunteered, that you said, yes, yes, count on me, 
and you went to the line, I think, for every time that you raised your hand again, and that you helped to lay the bricks of our rebuilding, I thank you. For your kindness to each other, for your generosity to the world, for every time that you have given, and given again, and again, and again, and for your readiness to fight, to fight, to fight, until everybody, everybody,
right? Because um, this is officially the largest crowd we have ever seen at our gala at the Claremont. Thank you very much. 700 of you are here tonight and raring to go. We also know that the need has never been greater in our community. And um, just the actions of today, and I won't belabor the point, but we know that this work falls to us and we must do it. And I have a little secret weapon here tonight that some of you may know, but um, on this stage a year ago, I told you I was introducing Clee Jones, and I told you about my baby sister, who is an out proud lesbian in Morristown, Tennessee. She and her partner of 25 years have been raising children, and they're progressive Democrats, and she's even a vegetarian, which is super weird in Tennessee. Um, and I brought it up because she was kind of a fangirl of Cleve. So we talked about her last year, so I thought it was only fitting that I have her here as my guest tonight. <laughs> so my baby sister's the, the hot dog back there in the tux. There's a lot of hot dogs here in Texas, but she's the one. And um, she brought with her our 82-year-old mom. Um, some wine together. Yes. Mom's ready to go to the Tonga room now because she understands they have whiskey there, so she wants us to get this done. <laughs> so we're ready to raise some money, right, Olga? Yeah, that's what I Okay, so we have a couple of ways you can do this. Um, if you are techno savvy, you can pull out your fancy phone right here, right? Are you connected to the Wi-Fi? I know you're connected because you've been like tweeting and posting all night long and hashtagging this and that, taking your selfies. Get on the Wi-Fi. If you don't have service, get on the Wi-Fi. And pick, take out your fancy phone and you just shoot a text. It's that simple. You text to 41444. That understands all the intersections of our communities. And you are just passionate and loving and I really, really appreciate it, and I love you, Roger. Thank you. And really, in all seriousness, thank you so much for helping us reach this amazing goal and to the fantastic Deb Stallings. Could this happen without her? No. Thank you so much. So we want to close the program by inviting my board colleagues coming up here and the rest of the Horizon staff to join us with our traditional toast to our community. Coming up. And so while they're making their way up to the stage, I just want to take this opportunity to tell you the party does not stop here, especially not now. We'll leave here. There are a couple of, uh, we're going to the Tonga Room. We're like literally y'all about to take over the Tonga Room. The bars are open there. Uh, the DJ Lamont is playing all your favorite dance songs that you, yes, you, will want to dance to. If dancing's not your number one jam, we have a couple of chill spaces tonight right outside this door. And in the Vanderbilt room, you can do bourbon tastings and chat with your friends there. So there's a lot of fun to be had here tonight, right after we leave this room. So officially, the total is $107,000.
and fulfill their dreams leads the way to our elders whose courage and bravery brought us this far and on whose shoulder we stand today. Okay, I'm gonna stop you all, come down. It's okay, we're all excited. It's okay. We're ending with this, with this toast. And I wanna add to our script, to the brave women who have stood up and told their story and told their truth. that will become whole with your love and your strength. Cheers. Yeah.